Hi students, hello and welcome back to my channel. So today we will be continuing the same, the treasure island which I have actually divided into three parts. So today I will be completing the entire chapter, the third part. So if you have not watched the first and the second part, I request you to please go back to my channel, watch it and then come back here. Let's continue with the third part now. Jim and Ben Gunn were surprised by the sound of distant cannon fire. Jim told Ben about Long John Silver and the pirates and asked him to go with him to find his friends. Ben shook his head. He said that he knew Long John Silver from way back when they were both members of Flint's crew and added that if Jim's friends gave him a promise of a safe passage home, then he would help them. With that, he slipped away into the undergrowth. When evening fell, the pirates stopped their useless bombardment. Jim approached the stockade cautiously, but when he saw the Union Jack flying above it, he knew that it was his allies who occupied it. Jim's friends were delighted to see him safe and sound and amazed to hear about Ben Gunn. The captain then told everyone it was time to sleep. Along with him, the squire and the doctor, there were just two more of the squire's men plus one sailor who had remained loyal. Six men and a boy against the fifteen pirates who still survived. Now as Jim and Ben Gunn were speaking with each other, they were surprised by the sound of the cannon fire. So Jim tells Ben everything about Long John Silver and the pirates. He requested Ben Gunn to help him so that he could save his friends or find his friends. So Ben Gunn, he says that he knows Long John Silver from way back when they were both part of the Flint's crew, Captain Flint's crew. He added that if Jim's friends gave him a promise that they would take him home, then he's ready to help them. And by saying that, he left or he went away from there. Now it was evening and the pirates had stopped their bombardment or attacking the cabin. Jim approached the stockade very cautiously, very carefully and what he saw was the Union Jack was flying above. Now Jim's friends were very happy to see him that he was safe and he, they were very happy to hear about Ben Gunn. The captain told everyone that it is time to sleep now. Now the only people loyal remained was the six men and a boy against the 15 pirates who were still alive. The next morning, Long John Silver appeared at the stockade's perimeter fence carrying a flag of truce. He offered to spare the defenders' lives if they gave him the treasure map. Captain Smollett refused him point blank, saying the pirate's word was not worth a rotten ship's biscuit and that they had no intention of giving up the treasure map anyway. No sooner had Long John Silver hobbled angrily away than the pirates attacked the stockade. The defenders retreated into the log cabin from which they exchanged musket fire with the pirates. Suddenly, several attackers swarmed over the perimeter fence. Two were shot down, one retreated, but four of them made it to the cabin wall where they were able to shoot in through the building's loopholes at will. Realizing the tables had been turned, the defenders rushed outside and fought the pirates hand to hand. So the next morning, Long John Silver, he came at the stockade's perimeter and he was carrying a flag of truce. Now he offered to sp spare the life of all of them if they are ready to give the treasure map. So Captain Smollett, he refused immediately and he said that he doesn't have or they don't have any intention of giving up the treasure map. So it is waste. We are not bargaining with you. Now Long John Silver angrily he went away and immediately the pirates started attacking the stockade again. Now the defenders they retreated. They ran into the log cabin and from there they started firing at the pirates. And suddenly several attackers came over the perimeter and Two were shot down, one retreated or one ran away and four of them made it to the cabin wall. Now realizing the tables had 
turned like it was going away from their hands the defenders what they did is they ran outside and they started fighting the pirates face to face a few minutes later the pirates lay dead but two of the squire's men had perished as well and the captain was wounded while the remaining defenders buried the dead the doctor made his way off into the woods intent on a secret plan jim too had had an idea with darkness approaching he armed himself with a pistol and slipped away into the shadows now a few minutes later what happened was the pirates they lay dead but two of the squire's men also had died and the captain was wounded now the remaining defenders they were burying the dead the doctor he slipped away from there he ran away because he was planning on a secret plan and jim also had a plan so what he did is or during the darkness he took a pistol and he ran away from there he made his way to the seashore where he found a small homemade boat that ben gun had told him about the little craft closely resembled a coracal and was very difficult to handle but he succeeded in paddling it out to the hispaniola from which drunken shouting voices could be heard jim wasted no time cutting through the ship's mooring ropes and setting it adrift by that time the tide was ebbing fast and the current in the channel was very strong jim found himself swept helplessly along with it thinking he was as good as dead he allowed exhaustion to overwhelm him now jim made his way towards the seashore and he found the boat that belonged to ben gun he took that boat with him he succeeded in paddling it out and he went towards the hispaniola and as he reached there he started hearing voices voices from drunken people and jim he did not waste any time he started cutting the ropes of the ship and he wanted to set it free by that time the tide was so fast and the current was strong so jim found himself helpless he couldn't save himself so he thought that he is dead now so he just left it he lost all hope the next morning jim awoke to find himself drifting near to the island's north coast close by was the hispaniola seemingly deserted he hurriedly paddled over to it and clambered aboard on the ship jim found the two pirates whose raised voices he had heard the night before they had obviously had a fight one lay dead the other had a bad wound in his thigh jim took the ship's wheel and steered for a creek in the north of the island where it could safely be run ashore the surviving pirate who minutes before had seemed to be gravely wounded suddenly sprang at jim as the ship ran gently aground the pirate chased jim up the main masts rigging and threw a knife at him although jim was slightly wounded he managed to aim his pistol and shoot his attacker dead the next morning when jim woke up he was near the north coast of the island so close by was the hispaniola it was deserted and he hurried towards the ship then on the ship he found two pirates that he had heard the night before who were fighting or shouting at each other so in that obviously they had a fight and one was dead and the other one was wounded very badly so jim took the wheel of the ship and he moved it towards the north of the island so that he could keep it safe over there the surviving pirate or the wounded pirate he observed jim and he wanted to kill him he suddenly sprang at him suddenly with a knife he just came to kill him now the pirate started chasing jim he wanted to kill him and he even threw a knife at him and that almost wounded jim but jim managed to aim the pistol and shoot at his attacker and he died very pleased that he had captured the ship and it was in a safe place jim made his way back to the stockade but to his horror it was long john silver and the pirates who greeted him for some reason the doctor had given it up to them along with the treasure map long john silver told jim that he, as he had been deserted by his friends he should now join the pirates but jim refused jim said that 
After seeing so much treachery and blood, he no longer cared what happened to him. But he wanted the pirates to know that it was he who uncovered their plot and it was he who took the ship. The other pirates wanted to kill him. But Long John Silver was impressed by his brave speech and told his men the lad would be of far more use to them as a live hostage than a dead cabin boy. Now Jim was very very happy that he has captured the ship and it was in a safe place. So immediately he ran away towards the stockade to inform his friends. But to his horror, the Long John Silver and the pirates were there to greet him and for some reason the doctor had given it up to them. He had given them the treasure map and also the stockade. So Jim was very shocked. He was astonished and Long John Silver tells Jim that now that he is deserted or left by his friends, he can join the pirates. But Jim refused. He said no. So Jim says, that after seeing so much of treachery and blood, he is no longer worried about what is going to happen to him. He just wanted the pirates to know. So he tells the pirates everything that it was he who uncovered their plot and it was he who took the ship away from them. So he just wanted to let them know about it. Now by listening to this, the other pirates were so angry and they wanted to kill him. Now Long John Silver was impressed by this boy's bravery and told his men that rather than killing him he might be helpful or useful in some other way. Long John Silver whispered to Jim that with the ship gone he was in a desperate pickle. He gave Jim to understand that if he were given the promise of lenient treatment he would be prepared to surrender to Captain Smollett. The pirates, meanwhile, were very angry at losing so many men and being marooned and gave Long John Silver the black spot. On its other side was the word deposed and who doomed the mission to failure? The one-legged pirate yelled at them. If they had waited until after the treasure was found before mutinying, then by now they would all have been rich. Now Long John Silver, he whispered to Jim, he said that, he knows that he is in trouble now because the ship was gone. So he tells Jim that if you people promise of good treatment with me, then I am ready to surrender to Captain Smollett. Now the pirates, meanwhile, they were very angry at losing so many men and being marooned because there was no ship so that they could go back. So they gave Long John Silver the black spot and on the other side was the word deposed. Long John Silver angrily shouted at them saying that who actually failed the mission? It was because of you people because if you people had not waited until the treasure was found before killing everyone then by now we would have been rich. A little later Dr. Livesey appeared under a flag of truce and treated the wounded men and those who were now suffering from malaria. He was allowed a few words with Jim who told him all about taking the ship. The doctor replied he had done very well, most especially in finding Ben Gunn. Before leaving again, he warned Long John Silver to beware of squirrels when digging up the treasure. After breakfast, the pirates set off to find the treasure, taking Jim, who was tied to a rope, along with them. Jim was still very puzzled as to why the doctor had given the pirates both the stockade and the treasure map but he supposed it must have been part of some plan. Now after some time Dr. Livesey appeared with a flag of truce and he wanted to treat the wounded men and those who were suffering from malaria. So he was allowed a few words with Jim. He wanted to speak to Jim and he told everything about taking the ship away. Now the doctor was very happy to hear this and he says that you have done a very good job and also in finding Ben Gunn. That was the best thing that you have done. So after breakfast, the pirates set off to find the treasure and they took Jim who was tied to a rope. Now Jim was still very puzzled. He was very shocked. Why did the doctor give the pirates the stockade as well as the treasure map? But then he thought maybe it was some plan. At length, following the directions of the treasure map, the pirates reached a clearing in which they found a sun bleached skeleton. Suddenly, an eerie voice rang out, singing, 
15 men on a dead man's chest, yo ho ho and a bottle of rum. Terrified, the pirates stopped dead. Even Long John Silver looked frightened, but then he told his men that ghost voices does not echo like that and anyway, ghost or no, nothing was going to keep them from their booty. The pirates moved on again and eventually caught sight of the giant tree that marked the spot where Captain Flint had buried the bulk of his treasure. Following the directions of the treasure map, the pirates, they found skeleton and immediately they heard a voice singing 15 men on a dead man's chest yo ho ho and a bottle of rum and they all were terrified they all were scared and even long john silver looked frightened as if they had all seen a ghost but immediately john silver he tells that ghost voices they do not echo like that and anyway if it is a ghost or no ghost nothing is going to keep us away from the treasure so the pirates started moving again and finally they reached the giant tree and there that was the spot where captain flint's treasure was buried long john silver's eyes gleamed with greed and jim knew that any promises he had made were now completely forgotten then the pirates let out a gasp of dismay for under the tree was a gaping hole in the ground that had obviously been dug several months ago the despairing pirates dug the earth at the bottom of the hole with their bare hands but the treasure had gone then they turned on long john silver and jim accusing them of treachery but before they could do them any harm a volley of gunshots rang out Two of the pirates fell to the ground dead. The remaining three turned and ran for their lives. Dr. Livesey, Squire Trelawney and Ben Gunn stepped out of the nearby undergrowth, their muskets still smoking. The doctor told Jim and Long John Silver that they had only reached them in time because Ben had held the pirates up with his ghostly song. Now John Silver's eyes were shining with greed and Jim knew that whatever promises he had done till now, he has forgotten everything. He is not going to fulfill it. And then they all were shocked because they saw under the tree there was a gaping hole which had been dug several months ago. So the pirates they started digging the earth at the bottom of the hole with their bare hand but the treasure was gone and now they turned towards long john silver and jim and they started accusing them because of the treachery they started accusing them that you have stolen all the treasure but immediately there was gunshots and two of the pirates they were killed and the remaining three they ran away from there so it was dr livesey squire trelawney and ben gunn stepped out of the nearby bush the doctor told Jim and Long John Silver that it was only because of Ben that we could reach on time. And if Ben had not sung the ghostly song and terrified you people, then we couldn't have made it on time. As they made their way to Ben Gunn's cave, where Captain Smollett was recovering, the doctor explained how he had gone to find Ben Gunn when he learned that Ben Gunn had already found the treasure and taken it to his cave and also saw that the ship had vanished, he gave the pirates the treasure map which was now useless and let them have the stocket where he was sure they would go down with malaria. Over the next few days, those who were still fit enough loaded all treasure onto the Hispaniola which was easily refloated on a high tide. The captain on the road to recovery said that because they were so short-handed, they should sail to the nearby Spanish Americas to take on more men. The three surviving pirates were left on the island, a much more humane punishment than that they had planned for their victims. As the Hispaniola sailed away, one of them shouldered his musket and put a ball inches over Long John Silver's head. Now as they made their way towards Ben Gunn's cave, Captain Smollett was recovering and doctor explained about how he had gone to find Ben Gunn and how Ben Gunn had already found the treasure months ago and he had taken it all towards his cave and he had also seen that the ship had vanished. That's why he gave the pirates the 
treasure map because it was useless now. Because the treasure was already with Ben Gunn and the ship was already gone. So he had given up the treasure map. And he gave the stocket because he was sure that people would be dead because of malaria over there. Few days they started loading all the treasure towards the Hispaniola. Now the captain who was recovering, he said, because we are having very less people here, we should sail towards the nearby Spanish Americas so that we can get more men from there. Whereas the three surviving pirates who had ran away from there, they were left on the island itself as a punishment. Now the Hispaniola it started sailing away. On reaching the mainland, more crew were taken on. Long John Silver managed to slip off board, taking with him some 400 in coins. Everyone was relieved to see the last of him. The journey back to England passed without incident. The expedition survivors all received an ample share of the treasure and while the rest used their money wisely, Jim learned that Ben Gunn was poor again within the month. Jim never had the urge to go to sea again, especially not to Treasure Island, although it was said that some of the treasure still remained undug there. In his worst nightmares, he would dream of the surf breaking over the island's rocks and Captain Flynn's shrill cry, pieces of eight, pieces of eight. Now on reaching the mainland, they took few members on the ship and at that time Long John Silver, he managed to slip away from there. He ran away from there and with him he took 400 coins with him and everyone was so relieved that he is gone and they do not have to see him again. Now the journey back to England, it went easily and all the people who were there, the survivors, they all got a share of the treasure and everyone started using that money very wisely and Jim learned that Ben Gunn was poor again within the month because he had so much of treasure with him. Now it is shared with everyone and Jim had decided that he is not going to Treasure Island again ever. They say that few of the treasure is still remained in that island undug. So he doesn't want to go there. And he keeps getting nightmares. He would dream of the surf breaking over the island's rocks. And he could hear the Captain Flynn's shrill cry. Pieces of eight, pieces of eight. I do hope you have understood this entire chapter. In case you have any doubts, you can comment below. And do keep watching for more videos. And do like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.